So you've decided to take the leap into taking commissions as an artist, but feel overwhelmed at the prospect and have absolutely no idea where to start. I want to let you know that you are not alone and every single artist ever who have offered commissions at one point or another have felt the exact same way. I am here today to offer you my beginner's guide to taking commissions in hopes of helping you in your own art journeys and easing some of those fears and anxiety. Let's not waste any time and let's jump right in. First, let's dive into what is a commission? A commission is when a customer approaches an artist and requests the artist to draw a specific art piece for payment. Commissions range from all sorts of different subject matter like pet portraits, wildlife and landscape paintings, character drawings, concept art, and more. These art pieces can be traditional or digital in nature, and both are categorized as commissioned artwork. With commissions, whether you are starting to sell your art as a business or a fun side hustle, you first need to decide what kind of artwork you are comfortable creating. I always recommend selling artwork that you find enjoyable and something you can see yourself creating long term. It is very easy nowadays in the world of social media to hop onto trends, what is currently selling well, in hopes of gaining clients, but that is not always sustainable and can honestly lead to burnout and you just being unhappy. Pick something you are passionate about, capitalize on your strengths as an artist, and work towards finding your niche. If you are passionate about what you are creating, you will make the best and most marketable artwork, and which in turn leads to higher success rates in finding and keeping your clients. When you've decided on the type of commissioned art that you're going to be offering, for example, my commissioned art pieces are typically pet portraits and wildlife paintings, we're going to go ahead and work on and create what we call a commission information page. Now, this is going to have all of the information regarding your work and the services that you offer and is usually found on places like your website, pinned posts on your social media accounts, or even handouts for in-person shows or conventions. So for example, here is my commission information page that can be found on my website, cassiedross.com. And essentially I offer two styles of commissions currently, one being my most popular, the basic pet or wildlife portrait that features a very simple background and the bust of the subject. Or I have a more intricate option, which is a much fuller painting, a full background, full subject of either a pet, wildlife, or even landscape subject matter. Now for both of these, I include a little description of the project or the type of commission I am offering, what it entails, and roughly how the process will work. I want my clients to know and feel more comfortable with what to expect in this entire process before even contacting me. A lot of first impressions and questions can be answered at this stage before the client even reaches out to you if you provide as much information as possible. I am sure to list my pricing very clearly and easy to read on my information pages, this being the most important factor. Now we will talk about pricing later on in this video, of course, everyone is waiting for it, but for now, just keep in mind to have your pricing very clearly stated for each of the types of commissions that you offer. Now, we want our clients to be able to make a decision right away whether or not that your art is in their budget and if contacting you is even worth pursuing. So whether you are working traditionally on canvas or digitally on the computer, we want to make sure we have our pricing values front and center for our customers to see. It is important to note as well on your commission information page, be sure to have listed a place to contact you with all business inquiries. So whether it is a get a quote section seen here at the bottom of my website or listing your business email that clients can email you on, having a place that your clients can reach you is so important. They may have some further questions that were not covered in your infographic or they might actually want to start the process of ordering your custom artwork. And if they have to search high and low for places to get in touch with you, a lot of customers just won't. We want to make it as easy as possible and to start off the experience great with some fast correspondence and customer service. Now, something that goes hand in hand with the information page, as I've mentioned, is pricing. So you have your information graphic completed, you're feeling good, but the big, glaring, ugly, empty space that remains to be filled is the price. I have been creating custom artwork for five to six years now, and even to this day, pricing artwork is stressful. There is no right or wrong answer to this question, but I will do my best to give you my advice and what I have found work for me. 
To start off, the easiest way to price your artwork is as follows. Now, this may change depending on if you are painting traditionally or digitally, but just bear with me. Let's pretend we are role playing for a moment and I have a new client inquiring about my work. They are looking for a standard pet portrait painting with a simple background on a 9 by 12 canvas. My formula is to first calculate all of my expenses needed for the project. Right away, I know they are looking for a 9 by 12 canvas and that canvas to purchase is $20. I will then want to calculate a rough estimate of the amount of paint needed to create this art piece. Now this won't be a for sure number unless you know that it will take an entire tube of paint to complete if it is a very large painting. Otherwise, you're going to have to do some estimating to determine this and it might not be a perfect number. Let's say we are going to use a quarter of a tube of paint and there are six colors needed for this particular pet painting. 0.25 or a quarter times six tube of paint equals 1.5. I multiply the 1.5 by the cost of the paint tube, which let's say is $10, and this equals $15 worth of paint expenses for this particular painting. Now again, this will be an estimate and I'm sure there are lots of ways to do this, but be sure to add in something to re-up your paint supply down the road. If there's anything else that you think qualifies as an expense, be sure to add that into your total now before we continue. These can be things that the client has specifically requested to be included in the art piece. For example, if it's a mixed media painting, any specialty papers, brushes, tape, glue, etc. Add all of that up and keep that totaled as your art expense section of your price. Now, if you are working digitally, you may want to add in an expense of some upkeep, whether it is for your computer, your tablet, a rainy day fund, I like to call it, in case something happens to your tablet, you need to replace it. Always having a little bit of money put aside from each of these commissions towards that upkeep, whether it's your internet or new external hard drives, etc. Be sure to kind of factor that into your digital costs as well. So you might not have the traditional side of expenses like your paint and your canvas, but you are going to want to put in some expenses to each of these commissions for those mentioned purposes. Once you have your expenses totaled, we're going to go ahead and calculate the price for our time. Now, this is going to be the largest section of the pricing cost and is going to vary from artist to artist. In my opinion, this is the most difficult part to manage. First, you're going to want to start to time your painting and drawing sessions for each of your commissions. Some art pieces might take you five hours, others might take you 50 hours, and you should be adequately paid for your time and your expertise. Once the painting is complete, you're going to add up all of the time from your sessions. So for our fake client inquiry, let's say the nine by 12 painting took around 15 hours. From there, you are going to multiply the length of time it took to complete by your wage you are being paid. At the very least, I always recommend artists get paid minimum wage in your area. Now, of course, this will vary from country to country, but at the very least, you should be getting paid that amount. So for example, in Canada, minimum wage at the time of filming this video is around $15 an hour. But for most paintings currently, I am charging anywhere between $30 to $35 an hour. So for our 9 by 12 pet portrait role play, I would multiply my $30 an hour wage by $15 hours and that would equal $450 for our painting. Now so far we are at a grand total of $485 for our painting including our time and our expenses. This does not include any shipping costs or any calculations of administrative time. Now you can see how quickly the price adds up and just how valuable your time truly is. Now this of course is not a set number. You may find that if you were just starting out that you may want to price your paintings a little bit more aggressively in order to rack up some testimonials, good customer service, and get some commission work under your belt. When I first started offering commissions, I was definitely priced aggressively, and this was in hopes of drawing in my clients and slowly increasing my hourly rate with each commission that I received and over the years I have spent running my business and painting in general. It's important to do your market research and take a look at what your other fellow artists are charging for their work. Find artists who have similar styles to you, offer the same shapes and sizes of your artwork, but also factor in your experience level too. 
If they have been painting for years like myself, my pricing may be higher than yours if you are just starting to paint or maybe don't feel comfortable enough or don't quite have that experience yet. This honestly is all trial and error and only you truly know what you are comfortable charging. Now this is just for painting time, but you may also want to factor in some expenses for your administrative time spent on your commissions. Emailing back and forth with clients, preparing canvases, or drawing rough thumbnails or ideas all take your valuable time too. You can use the hourly rate to charge for some of this administrative time if you find yourself doing a lot of work outside of the actual creating for your client. So for example, if I had worked two hours of administrative time for our fake client role play, I would add on another $60 to my total, which would then make my total $545. This is especially important for artists who are completing work that may have a lot of adjustments or changes like a logo or graphic design. This can be incredibly important as the client may come back to you multiple times with changes to your artwork. Now that we have our commission information page and our pricing completed, we can go ahead and start tackling the fun part of the job, marketing you and your artwork to the rest of the world. Marketing your commissions can be facilitated in two ways, online and in person. Most artists these days tend to generate a lot of their commission leads and sales through online social media channels, the most popular ones being Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. By creating artwork and posting on social media, whether it is in a picture format or video format, it is the best way to reach clients globally and to develop not only leads for your business, but also begin to develop a community who love and adore your artwork. These channels can take a very long time to generate traction, so just keep that in mind as you start. Try not to compare yourself to other artists or creators online who may have thousands of followers and generate sales and commission inquiries every single day. We all have different stories, we all started at different times, we have different art and art styles, and your worth is not depicted from the likes that you receive on your social media posts. Now, that is a whole rant for a whole other video, but just keep that in mind. Have fun with social media, create fun posts that are engaging, and put your work out there for those potential buyers to see. That truly is half the battle, is generating the courage just to get started. Remember to have your commission information up and in places that are incredibly visible so that your clients can see it and contact you, whether it is a pinned post on Twitter or Instagram now, a profile bio, or all of the above. Speaking of social media and community, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video and my channel here on YouTube, Chartpack. Chartpack offers an incredible variety of products for artists and features brands like Grumbacker, Borden and & Riley, and Molotol. The vast majority of products I use throughout my work are Chartpack branded products and I have been a huge fan for a very long time. I am honored and grateful to be one of their global art ambassadors and I'm so thrilled to be a part of the Chartpack family. Their links can be found in the description box below, as well as links of where to purchase their products for your own art toolkits. Check them out and let me know what you think. Now, not to be slept on is in-person events and the power of marketing in a convention or show type setting. Over the last couple of months, I have started to display my artwork in shows by having my own booth, and this has led to both sales and commission leads. Market goers who are visiting the event typically will stop by to view your work, maybe purchase something off of your table, but if nurtured with time and genuine conversation, these wandering customers can become future clients with commissions. Now, this type of marketing does have an added expense, so unlike social media that is free, most venues charge for you to display your wares with boothies and rentals, not to mention any upfront costs you may have of actually producing your work in a purchasable format. So for example, art prints, calendars, coasters, bookmarks, etc. But if this expense can be maintained and managed, it's a great investment to drum up local business and really further create a community around your artwork. 
Just like in social media platforms, you will want to have some sort of visible material in regards to you offering custom artwork. A lot of customers won't know to ask, so they will have to see some sort of marketing poster or brochure to kind of spur that conversation. I prefer to have a binder on my table that customers can flip through that offers a showcase of past client work and information graphics in regards to pricing and a quick synopsis of the process for them to read, very similar to my website but in printed format. It's easy to see, quick graphics are best as most customers only spend a few moments at your table before moving on to something else. So really capturing their interest and spurring that conversation as quickly as possible is key. So far, we have our information graphic, we have started to market our wares, and now we have some interested clients in our custom commissions. Let's talk communication. From the moment the commission process starts, that initial email, we need to have good communication with our buyers in order to instill confidence and comfort throughout this process. Before anything creative happens, we want to make sure that our client's vision and what we offer as an artist lines up. Discuss the details of the project in depth with them. What size are they looking for? What budget do they have to work with? Subject matter? Color palette? Do they want their painting or drawing to match a specific room in their home, their decor? Will it need to be framed afterwards? Or are they going to frame it themselves? All of these questions will help create a smooth experience and ensure that you are the correct artist for the job. Not only is communication important in the beginning of the process, but throughout the entire experience. Provide your clients progress photos of your work, from the sketch to your base layers, all throughout your drawing or painting progression. From my experience, clients love to see you working on their art piece, and it almost makes them feel as though they are a part of the creation of it. This serves as an excellent way of gauging with your client whether or not you were on the right track. It definitely removes the, oh yeah, can you change this when the piece is already completed and you having to backtrack, remove, change elements of the painting, which would have been much easier to adjust at the very beginning and not when it's actually finished. Your client is spending a lot of money and with the cost of art, it's not cheap. Provide excellent customer service and communication to ensure that they are happy and potentially pass on your name to someone they may know who also is looking for artwork. Word of mouth is huge when it comes to business and each customer who leaves happy knows a lot more people that may want to get in contact with you. We've talked about communication, let's talk about payment. After discussing the details of the project and with excellent communication from us, the artist, your client wants to move forward with the purchase and commission you for custom artwork. Now comes the payment portion of taking commissions, and this I always found to be very stressful. This is when the process really starts to feel real. There are a lot of ways to do this, and everyone is different, but for me personally, I always take a deposit up front before any work is done. For every wonderful customer, there are also bad ones, and I have seen time and time again so many artists being stood up for payment. Take a deposit first. It can be 25%, it can be 50%, whatever you are comfortable with charging your client up front. If this customer never returns to pay you for your work, are you all right and comfortable with the deposit amount? Does it cover your initial expenses like your canvas costs? Remember back to our little pet portrait role play. That price of those expenses was around $35. So I'm going to want to make sure that my deposit covers that expense and potentially a little bit of my time, let's say sketching out the subject. So those are questions you can ask yourself before deciding on a set amount. And maybe this will vary from project to project depending on the scale and the complexity. I personally take 25% upfront and my deposits are non-refundable. It is basically my way of ensuring I am being paid, but also to make sure that the client is serious about pursuing a commission. It is a lot of time, money, and energy for us both, and I want to make sure that my client is 1000% sure before they wish to proceed. By taking a deposit, it's also a great way to filter through scam inquiries, which right now seem to be abundant. It's actually kind of frustrating. If the opportunity seems too good to be true, it probably is. 
Most scammers will not want to front a deposit cost and they will fight you on this. They will insist on payment afterwards and only after they have seen the art or it has been delivered. And that to me is a huge red flag. Most genuine customers who are fans of your work will be more than happy to pay you a deposit to ensure their spot on your commission list and will understand also from your perspective why this is important. After all, you are now a business offering a service and you need to protect yourself and your important assets. When the work is completed, you can then take your final payment. This will be the remaining balance and is only paid when the client is happy. So I give my clients a final check on the commission, a finished photograph, usually from multiple angles, and with their approval of the painting, I then will take final payment. I do most of my commission payments via PayPal, but you can use whatever service you prefer and that you are comfortable with. You finish the commission, your customer is happy, and the painting has been approved and paid for. Let's talk deliverables. Now, if you work digitally, this section may not apply to you as you may be sending your artwork via email or Dropbox, but if you are physically sending the artwork, this part is important. Shipping is expensive and every year it seems to cost more and more and can really affect small businesses and how they sell their products and where they sell them. Offering commissions, you have two options. Either you can include the cost of a rough shipping estimate into your price, or you can charge shipping additionally directly to your client. I have seen artists do both and be successful with both, and everyone is different. I myself have found it more effective to include a rough estimate of a shipping cost bundled into my price, so my customer doesn't have to worry about any additional fees. Now, the best way to go about creating an estimate and how I created mine was I built a mock draft of all of the size commissions that I offer and I packaged them in a sort of fake role play again, exactly how I would for my client. I went to the post office and I got a quote for every parcel for both domestic and international shipping, including tracking. That way you are able to roughly build this shipping cost into the cost of your commissions and your client doesn't ever have to worry about additional surprise fees. Uh, They're already paid for. Tracking is vital when it comes to shipping and I encourage you to spend the extra to have it on all of your original commissions being sent or any custom or original artwork for that matter. You want to make sure that if this parcel gets lost, you have a tracking number to chase it down with the post office or making sure it arrives at your client's home and is actually received. I can go on and on about scams and how rampant they are, but just imagine spending all of this time creating your commission, sending it to your client. They tell you it never arrived, even though it may have, and quite safely, and ask for a refund, and most times a full refund. Trust me, it is out there and it is a headache. Cover all of your bases and make sure your parcels are tracked and insured depending on the value. It makes everyone feel a little safer and your client too, being able to physically track the package online, knowing that you, the artist, actually sent it, it's on its way and when it is expected to arrive to make some arrangements. Lastly, with commissions, something that a lot of artists don't think about is the after. Client testimonials and reviews are instrumental in other customers' buying decisions, whether we realize it or not. How many times have you looked up a restaurant or a product you wanted before buying it just to check out the reviews, see what other people are saying? Does it have an excellent rating? Or maybe there are some problematic areas that you didn't realize. The same can be said for artists and their commissions. The easiest way, in my opinion, to collect testimonials is through a testimonial app or a section on your website. I found this cute little app on Wix that allows my customers to write their testimonials entirely from their device and send them to me for my approval and addition to the website. They can add their own photographs, rate the experience with stars, and provide insight to their experience working with me. It is a great way to generate feedback and provide future customers with real life testimonials to help their buying decisions and potentially provide more confidence and comfortability in their decision. In addition to having testimonials on your website, you can also use photographs sent from the client, like the painting hung up on the wall or maybe an unboxing video on your own social media platforms. 
Include a little snippet in the caption of their testimonial and experience with you and include their photographs for your followers to see. This is a great way to show a sort of behind the scenes type post to your platform. So you're not always just posting your artwork. It's a little bit of a more personal touch and it also works as great insight into the experience that is shopping with you. I'd love to hear your feedback and questions about today's video. If you have anything you would like me to cover further, I would be more than happy to make this a part two. There is so much to discuss and so little time, so drop a note in the comments below and let me know. If you found this guide helpful, be sure to hit the subscribe button and join our growing YouTube family. I would love to have you. If you'd like to see more content, check out this video for a full tutorial on how to paint a tiger. And who knows, maybe you'll have an inquiry about a tiger painting commission and I can help.